for as long as I can remember. I used to hate seeing Mondays come around. That is until I started trading. <laughs> How about you? I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is a Monday. It is July 10th. Now we're going to do what we always do on this show. We're going to focus in on stocks under five bucks, regardless what market they're on. Those are called penny stocks. And we're going to look for penny stocks that have potential to make us money. Those are hot penny stocks. Now, when I go searching for hot penny stocks, I do all of my work on the charts. I'm going through charts from my scans, looking for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find it, voila, that goes on my list of stocks I might share with you. At the end of the day, I narrow it down to a few and I share those with you. And I've got those all picked out. First one we're gonna look at here is ticker BBIG, Vinco Ventures. Been a lot of buzz out there about this. I've had a few people ask me to look at it. So we're gonna take a look at it. So what is her chart? It's on fire. These last two days she has been ripping with a lot of volatility. She's got a lot happening right now. There are a lot of changes going on, but I'm not real sure if it's good. So let's dive into this together. Big finished the day at just about $1.83 and she dropped about 2.5%. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, which means you don't have to pay anything to trade her. You can get in for free, get out for free. Unlike the OTC where most of us still have to pay for all those transactions. So what is Vinco Ventures about? Well, they got a few things going on. They deal with physical products and digital apps. Vinco Ventures develops and commercializes end-to-end -end consumer products in North America. It offers a bunch of stuff, kitchenware, small appliances, toys, pet care, baby products, health and beauty aids, entertainment venue merchandise, housewares. They do this for retailers, mass market retailers, and e-commerce sites. They also provide personal protective equipment to governmental agencies, hospitals, and distributors. They've also got some apps. They have the Lomo Tiff app, which allows users to create their own music videos. Another app they have is Cortex. This helps you with your advertising campaigns. And then they also have NFTs. You know what NFTs are. We haven't talked about them for a long time, but this is a digital way of putting something on, a picture, a recording, something you can sell personally and make money on. So they're doing that as well. So they're working in the physical markets with a lot of products and they've got some digital applications as well. So they've got a lot of different streams of revenue. What was the relative volume around the company today? Wow, look at that, 10 times, 1,000% jump today, Woohoo! She went from 788,000 to 7.88 million. That is incredible, folks. Let's see what we have for share structure here. That's right. She did a reverse split. I do believe it was in May. I can't remember exactly what her share count was, but you can see where it is now. We've got a low float. I don't know precisely what the float is, but I see their outstanding share count is only 12 and a half million. Yeah, 10 million is a legitimate low float, but look, that's close enough. So we got a low float with big here. Looking at the financials for Vinco, they've been falling. For the last four years, they started here at 16 million. I know that's millions because they tell me to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Down to 12 and a half, 12, 9.7. Looking at the quarterly, oh, same thing going on there. Wow, 229,000 here, 8 million, 11 million, 10 million, 5 million. And look at the profits. The profits have been falling and they are way down right now. Not quite sure what all of that is about. You know, they've got two apps and they've got lots of products. You would think they'd be making money and be profitable at it. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got a couple here. Matter of fact, I've got all these lined up. Had to remember here for a second. This is where all the important stuff is at. Now, I've already got these opened up, so we're just going to jump right through these 8Ks. This one here came out on May 19th. This 8K tells us that they had, on May 19th, entered into an employment agreement 
with James Robertson, their new CEO and president, and Chris Palamini, their new CFO and COO. So they brought in two new head honchos in May. And just so you know, they're paying these guys $425,000 a year for that position. It's good for five years with a one-year extension automatically in place unless someone interrupts it. And they get an extra $25,000 every year. So they're doing pretty good. In five years, in three years, they'll be making a half a million dollars a year. The next date, K. Now this was big news and we'll see this when we look at the news, but the company had aligned themselves to purchase National Enquirer, The Globe, and one other one that's attached with it. They were gonna buy those. It was a deal with A360 Media Group. It was on February 2nd of this year, uh, Vinco Ventures entered into an asset purchase agreement with A360 Media to purchase the National Enquirer, The Globe. But Vinco received a notice of termination of the asset purchase agreement from the company effective immediately. So that deal's gone. They're not getting the National Enquirer, they're not getting the Globe, and they're not getting that other one that they have too. Those are all gone, so that deal is now off the table, which was a huge catalyst. Then we've got a situation over here. They just had three directors resign. They tell us not for any bad reasons. Yeah, as if they're gonna tell us, right? They've had three of them resign here. Well, there is a lot of buzz right now about personnel. I have not gone into this deep, folks, but I got a Twitter, a tweet here on Twitter I wanna share with you. Big, more and more cases coming at Vinco Ventures and said individuals. Clark County judges have their hands full. Discovery from six to eight ongoing cases will pull the truth out. Their reign of fraud against the shareholders will come to an end and justice will be served. Now I got nothing more I can add to that, except they have a lot of discussion about the people who've been running this business and about what they've been doing. And honestly, I don't know. I didn't dive in that deep. I didn't think we'd have time to actually present that information. But it is something you need to look into. They've got a lot going on about their inside management. And particularly uh, Lisa and Lawson. Those two names, Lisa is the first name. That was of that girl over here, uh, Lisa King. And then I do believe there was a Lawson, Jason Lawson or somebody else. But we need to do more research there because as I've said a hundred times, Management is the make or break of any company. Doesn't matter how much money they're making, how hot their technology is, what new contract they just got. Management can screw it up bad. Management can save it as well. So study up on the management, see what's going on there. You should be doing that before you ever invest in a company, honest. Now most of those 8Ks we just looked at, they're just reiterated over here in the news. It was back on April 20th. They got their new president, CFO, COO. Also in April, they announced that they were buying, at least they had intentions on buying, the National Enquirer and the Globe. The reverse split was announced in May, and that is now a done deal. And the last piece of news we got here came out May 25th, NASDAQ staff determination. Now this sounds like an old piece of news, but it isn't, I assure you, this is quite relevant. Finco Ventures announced that they had received staff determination on May 18th regarding the fact that they had yet to file their Form 10-Q for the period ended March 31st. They had a hearing on May 25th and they received a determination letter on April 14th that stated that the company and NASDAQ agreed that they would have their 10-Q filed by July 7th of this year. Folks, that was three days ago, Friday. They missed it. If you look here, there is no 10K, no 10Q, nothing filed on the 7th. They missed it. So what's that mean? Well, <laughs> when lottery missed their date, they fell to the OTC real fast, and they're still down there right now. So that's what I would presume. Again, folks, we need a lot more due diligence here. Finding out what's going on with the management, finding out why the revenues have taken a drop, finding out why they haven't filed. There's a lot of things here. The only thing I can say is hot is the chart. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that. You know where we're at. 
That's right, Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you. So we are looking at ticker BBIG Vinco Ventures. That is a six month, four hour chart. And as you can see, she hasn't been doing anything for quite a while. She's been pretty flat and just dribbling downhill until she hit her ultimate low here of 14 cents, March 11th. And I want you to take notice here. Look at all the volume while she was flat and dribbling. Then she had her reverse split. That's what you're looking at here. She jumped from that 14 cents up to $2.75, and then it got pushed a little more up to $3.05, falling back down to around the 230, 240 range and hung out right there. But look down here. Where is the volume? We had tons of volume when she was flat over here. Now that she's gotten way up here, nobody's interested. She finally fell away came underneath that 200 and she has pushed herself back up with two very strong days. Look at all the volume that's just all of a sudden come back and I'm not real sure why. Our oscillators, well our PPO just had a crossover, it's now put itself on the top. Our MACD has had a crossover on the signal line. Both of these are very much alike. The PPO is percentage price oscillator and the MACD is, well the MACD. <laughs> MACD uses the whole price percentage price oscillator right uses a percentage of the price and our RSI is clear up at 62 right now now what I want to do before I leave this page is I want to grab my Fibonacci and I want to poke the bottom of this surge and the top of that surge because that's going to come in handy over here let's jump on down to our 20 day one hour view so we had a high of two dollars and 38 cents 20 days ago hit a low of a dollar 12 didn't really do much. I mean, she bounced a little up, but then she just went sideways for a real long time, laying on top of her 50-day SMA. And then yesterday, well, actually Thursday, she took off. She just started running from $1.19 all the way up to $2.10, virtually 100% gain. She came back down, and then she took another jump the next morning from $1.58 up to $2.37. 75% gains. Now she's falling back down and you can see she is bouncing multiple times off of her 20 day SMA. And look what we got happening right now. A golden cross. When your 50 day SMA crosses your 200 day SMA, that is one of the most powerful technical signs on the chart. People love to search for these, actually search for them with their scans and they play those stocks. So this is in a strong position right now. Our oscillators are a mess. These huge drops after those huge surges are making everything look weak. And some of it is weak right now. But take notice of our 200-day SMA. It's flat. It's flat and just now starting to turn up. That is all looking good. Five day, five minute. All right. Here is that 50% mark. I put up my Fibonacci. I'm looking for the halfway point. That is the halfway point. If, if I bring it all down, that's the middle line right there. What I want to see is the price stay above the 50% mark. If you stay above the 50% mark on your Fibonacci, you have a stronger likelihood of starting to climb. If you settle underneath it, stronger likelihood you're going to fall. Well, right now we have been bouncing, not only on the 200, but also on that 50% mark. She got up over it, hit her head here, fell back to it hit her head up here. You can see how these supports and resistances with the Fibonacci are respected. And now she's come all the way back down through her 200 and she has not come down to this line. She's actually starting to push up right now and her oscillators look like they are in recovery, like they are working up. Now I would like to give you reasons why this is going to run. The best one I can give you, they better get that financial in. I mean like today or tomorrow. I would not be surprised to see if this falls down to the OTC this week. I wouldn't. And the price will fall with it, which is going to make that reverse split completely worthless. It is a shame to see all of this falling together the way it is. So fingers crossed, folks, they come out with some news that they got that filing out. That's what we need. Got another penny stock from the NASDAQ for you. This is On Days Holdings, ticker ONDS. Now she's got a sweet chart. It is one of those atypical breakout charts. With the 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious, leveling off, giving the price a chance to come under it, get on top and start to run. 
and she's got great catalysts. She's had two big pieces of news here currently about deals she's made here in the States and abroad. So on day's holdings, she finished the day at $1.15 with almost 12% gains. So what is on day's holdings all about? Well, they tell us here, we are a wireless networking company that designs and manufactures a multi-patented software-defined radio platform for mission-critical Internet of Things applications. Our customers and markets include utilities, oil and gas, transportation and government entities, whose demands span a wide range of mission-critical applications that require secure communications over large and diverse geographical areas. So what was our relative volume today? Well, not bad. Almost a 300% increase, jumping from 386,000 to almost a million shares today. Share structure for ONDS, not bad. Outstanding share counts around 52.5 million. If we can trust the number for the restricted shares, these are the number of shares the insiders, the management own, we would have about 43 million in the float. Not a bad float, we're not gonna brag about it, but we're not gonna complain. Financials for the company, well, their revenues have been pretty steady and consistent. They're doing about 2.1 to 2.9 million every single year. Quarterly, wow, they just had an explosive first quarter for this year, exceeding any of their annual revenues that we just looked at. 2.6 million in three months. The three month period before, they only did 478,000, which is like six times more revenue this last quarter. And I'm sure that is tied into the big news I'm gonna share with you here. Disclosures, both of these 8Ks, they are also tied to that news. So let's just jump into that. The first big piece of news came out June 23rd. They tell us here that on this holdings, American Robotics, to provide Massachusetts Department of Transportation Aeronautics Division with smart city autonomous drone applications. This is a funded agreement with Massachusetts Department of Transportation, which will implement American Robotics autonomous drone technology to improve data collection and safety, while reducing operational costs for multiple state entities. That's gotta be quite enticing for Massachusetts. Now, this is just the beginning framework for a large-scale mass adoption of the Optimus System drone across the entire state of Massachusetts. That is a big deal. Now, our next two pieces of news actually go together. This one came out July 5th. On this holdings, Aerobotic successfully completes the Optimus drone infrastructure proof of concept program in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And then this piece of news talks about their agreement because of that. This agreement is the latest in a series of contracts and collaborations in the United Arab Emirates. The agreement was signed following the successful implementation of the Optimus Systems fleet as part of an urban drone infrastructure solution for public safety and emergency response applications in the city of Dubai. Optimus systems have been extensively utilized by the local government entity, carrying out thousands of operational drone flights without human intervention under challenging environmental conditions and in densely populated areas. Now to give you an idea of exactly what this system is, the aerobotics drone infrastructure is specifically designed for urban environments and strategic facilities that require immediate security, monitoring and emergency response. Each system within the infrastructure framework includes a smart air base, enabling automated battery changes for 24 seven operations, along with the automated loading and installation of sensors appropriate for each specified mission. Each system covers an area of up to 30 square miles surrounding an air base. Drone flights can be tasked to carry specific sensors, enabling every drone in the system to execute diverse tasks. And that last piece of news came out July 10th. The company announces an investment of at least $15 million in the company's networks by the investment group led by Charles and Potomac Capital. So they've got people investing big money, they're making big money, working in the United Arab Emirates, working in Massachusetts, and their revenues just exploded. And I'm sure the next one's gonna be big too. Let's go take a look at that chart now. 
Not a bad atypical breakout chart, eh? <laughs> this is on this holdings, ticker ONDS, six month, four hour view. Virtually six months ago in October, we hit a high of $4.61, had a lot of falling since then, hit a low of 78 cents in April. She has just pretty much been going sideways here, basically waiting for the 200 to get close. And you can see she's anxious to climb. She jumped up onto the 200 prematurely here, slid down this hill, fell back down, jumped again. But this time she put these intentional directional spikes on the board. What I mean is when I see the 200 day SMA sloping and I see these big spikes go way high and then she comes right on back down without losing any strength. She just came back to where she started. That tells me I'm going to climb. As soon as I get an opportunity, as soon as this 200 day SMA planes out, I'm out of here. Well, what happened? Once it planed out, she's out of here. She's floating on her nine day SMA, looking sweet. Our oscillators are all hot. PPO and MACD are pushing to the moon. RSI is clear up at 67. 20 day, one hour view. So she bounced off for 50, tagged the 200, tagged the 200. She lost it here. But now she's pushing back up and look at that. We've got a golden cross sitting on the table right now. The 50 day crossing the 200. Oscillators show a little bit of pullback because of the aftermarket activity, but it has fallen directly on top of the nine day SMA and it's bounced twice. So that looks pretty decent. Five minute, five day. That's a sweet chart. Low bubble in this corner of 82 cents high bubble in this corner of a dollar two and she's been climbing all the way through. She has been respecting the 200. She did dip a little, but she's been riding it and now she's graduated to the 50 day SMA. She did come underneath it here, but it looks like she's trying to get back on top. Ah, I do see a fall here and all of our oscillators look sad right now. These do look sad. They're all pointing down as you can see. Now there is a possibility this could come all the way back down to the 200. If it hits the 200, I would expect it to bounce. So don't be too much in a hurry to get it here. It needs to either get on top of the 50 for it to be a buy zone in my opinion, or you gotta wait for it to bounce off of the 200. Those are the two places I think are buy entries on this. But I like what she's doing. She's got the big deal over in the United Arab Emirates and Massachusetts, and you saw her revenues just blow up. So what's the next one gonna be? And it is due here anytime. So ONDS, don't take your eyes off of it. The next revenues could be hot too. The last ticker we're taking a look at comes from the OTC markets. This is Next Gen Food Robotics Corporation, ticker NGRBF. Now they just changed their name in January. They used to be called Holy Cow Foods. They've turned to this name because they're now working with robotics as well. What this company does is that they have ghost kitchens. A ghost kitchen is a restaurant that only has delivery service. They don't have any in-house seating. They've also got an app that they've just brought out, Lily, that connects all their ghost kitchens to all these different delivery services so their products can get out there. And the reason they changed their name is they now have a factory where they are packaging up this food. But they're using robotics to do it. 90% of all the work is being done by robots. So they've got some hot news and they've got a hot chart. The chart has been growing ever since they changed their name. Haven't had a down day yet. So I'm thinking maybe we should take a look at this. So NGRBF, she finished today just a little over 90 cents and just a hair over 5% gains. She is on the pink tier, she's current, but we don't have a verified transfer agent. We don't have a verified profile. And I think that has more to do with the ticker change that came with the name change. We are missing a lot of information here and I apologize for that. But I like the chart and I do like the news that I've read. So I still think it's worth looking at. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Looks like they had a pretty good day actually, jumping 250% in volume going from 327,000 shares a day to 835,000 shares today. Share structure for next gen, no clue what the float is, but the outstanding share count isn't bad at all, 38 and a half million. So we know our float is less than that. Financials for the company. 
we've got nothing showing up here. So what you do is you jump into disclosures and get the most recent financial. Eh. <laughs> Can't do that. They haven't brought any of it forward yet. I guess since they changed their name and their ticker, things just haven't caught up. So we got nothing here. Now I'll be honest, if I am to invest into next gen, I'm gonna go do my research. I'm gonna find those financials and I'm gonna go through them. I would suggest the same for you too. So let's take a look at that news since that's the only information we're really gonna get. I have gone back here to May 12th. NextGen provides updates on the Lilly app. The company is pleased to announce that it is making significant progress on the development of its proprietary Lilly app. NextGen anticipates that the app will be completed in the next 60 days and at that time will be potentially connected to 10,000 restaurants and grocery stores. Lily is being built with its own AI language processor and will not be required to link into ChatGPT for natural language implementation or data points. So they say. Then it was about a week later, they hired some marketing people to help them engage their investors, advertise for them. I hate to use that word, but that's really what they're doing. Then at the beginning of June, they had an investment, a non-brokered private placement. Somebody had some money, came and invested $1 million, and they closed that on the 15th. They are also looking for a second factory to package foods using robots. Their next big piece of news came out on the 19th of June. NextGen Food Robotics announces work on development and integration with U.S.-based restaurant point-of-sale API within NextGen's AI app, Lily. They tell us here that at the front of Lily's capabilities, upon completing this API integration, Lily will have the ability to search for food across over 1 million stores and access more than 1 billion products. This unparalleled reach enables users to explore a vast database of options offering convenience and choice. 10,000 restaurants, a million stores, a billion products. In addition, Lily's delivery selection is expanded through integration with over 30,000 third-party delivery services, courier services, and stores with, the, with their own drivers. This comprehensive network of delivery options guarantees that users can choose the most convenient and efficient service available, enhancing the overall food ordering experience. And that last piece of news is a little funny to me. They tell us here that NextGen Food Robotics Corps is pleased to announce that it has reached a significant milestone in the development of its AI food ordering app, Lily, with the integration of the advanced large language model powered by GPT 4.0. I thought they weren't going to connect to chat GPT. Who cares? Look, they are connected to 30,000 delivery services. 1 million stores, a billion products, 10,000 restaurants. Wow, it is huge, folks. And I do believe that the company is going to continue to grow. And I'm thinking the chart's going to continue to grow, too. You look at it and tell me. Looking at NGRBF, Next Gen Food Robotics, six month, four hour view. We got a low bubble back here of two cents. This is back in March, and we hit a high of 92 cents just a few days ago. Folks, that is 4,800% gains. She then jumped up here to 33 cents. That is a 300% gain. Now, she's been climbing ever since then, very slowly. She's not going crazy, but you can see she's got some nice pops in here regularly. And here, just a few days ago, she took a nice jump, has been going sideways, and looks like she's ready to launch again. Look at that volume. Volume has been growing and getting stronger. Has decreased a little bit, but it is still pretty strong. Speaking of pretty strong, look at our oscillators. PPO, MACD pushing to the moon, RSI is actually on fire. Everything looks hot on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour chart. We love these charts with the low bubble in this corner. 45 cents, riding on the 50 day SMA, pushing up to the 20 day SMA, launching to the nine day SMA, back down to the 20. Here comes our 200 day SMA and our 200 haul. They are now coming into the picture. And that worries me a little bit 
because when I see a new SMA come onto the board, in many cases, the price will gravitate to the SMA, whether it be above the price or below the price. Now, that came in back here. When it came in, the price went away from it rather than to it. So maybe we escaped that dilemma. Oscillators right now, for some reason, they cooled off with this sideways period. Look at this. She's flat, even though she was climbing here. We do have a separation between our PPO and our ADX. ADX is trend continuation. As long as this line keeps going the same direction, it means the trend is going the same direction. So this is going down. As long as it goes down, our price is going up. Well, when you see the PPO, that blue line going up, and the ADX red line going down and they're spreading, guaranteed your price is rising. So this is looking promising. Our MACD has got a crossover happening, but she's fighting it right now. And our RSI is just pulled out of the overbought and is at 68. Five day, five minute. Our low bubble is in this corner at 62 cents. She bounced off of that 200, got a nice rip. Boy, she went from uh, 65 cents clear up to 90 cents came back down went sideways had another jump climbed a little bit she likes to jump first thing in the morning we can see that she's been going sideways here for a few days had a small jump today and then went sideways with a little bit of roll up and she is riding the 50 day sma it really doesn't look that bad she's not a surger she is just growing nice and calm nothing wrong with that Oscillators on the five minute are weak. They look like they're falling right now, but I think she's bouncing. She could go sideways some more, but that's what she's doing. Sideways climb, sideways climb. So if you're looking for something that's not gonna scare you and drop out from underneath you, this looks pretty promising. But there was a lot of information missing there. So please do some more due diligence before you invest into next gen food robotics. Thanks for stopping in, folks. I appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope I made it worth your while. I hope you learned something about these stocks, but please, I did not give you everything. Do some more due diligence. If I've made you curious, I did my job. Now go do yours. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.